Hi, this is Paolo and uh, I am from NTT and uh, today I would really like to speak to you about, uh, uh, you know, uh, BMP, the BGP monitoring protocol and, you know, this is really one, in my opinion, one of the best kept secret of, at uh, ITF, right? And I would like to share it uh, with you. And I would like to share with you also what are the um, unprecedented opportunities that uh, BMP uh, gives uh, in order to uh, stream, streamline BGP data collection. Um, before starting a little bit about myself, in case you, you know, uh, don't know me, uh, I am Paolo, I work for NTT, uh, and in NTT I specialize, uh, you know, I work for NTT, the uh, Global IP Career Division, and there I specialize for uh, in um, uh, telemetry collection, um, every sort of telemetry, streaming telemetry, net flow, SNMP and things like that, B BGP collection and things like that. And, uh, you know, telemetry has been a little bit my, um, uh, in my DNA forever. Um, in fact, I would say I am also the um, author of a, a tool, open source uh, tool called PMSCCT, which, you know, it's a, a well-known uh, NetFlow, IPFIX, BGP uh, collector. And I am also, you know, a contributor uh, to standardization and community forums. And, you know, because of that, I am also here. And, uh, yeah, of course, why having the same um, name on every social media, you know, uh, it will be, you know, uh, too easy. Um, before starting uh, with the, uh, uh, the specifics of BMP, I wanted a little bit to um, give you, uh, contextualize, you know, uh, where BMP stands in the world of, uh, you know, uh, telemetry, network telemetry, and network analytics, and also what will be the, you know, scope of this presentation, right? So first of all, let's say, let's contextualize uh, BMP in the space of telemetry. Like you can see, I hope you can see also my mouse uh, pointer here. Um, so essentially you have, you know, uh, it's a BMP, it's just a little piece and, uh, you know, uh, focuses on uh, the control plane collection, um, data collection, but of course, you have other planes. You have the infrastructure, you have the forwarding plane, and things like that. So you see it's a multi-dimensional uh, space here. So um, BMP is control plane data collection. And then on the vertical part, essentially BMP is uh, uh, just, a, let's say, a protocol, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, developed. It's uh, being standardized inside, uh, you know, ITF, and it's only protocol for, you know, uh, collecting data. So it's between, you know, a monitoring station and an exporter, and the exporter would typically be, you know, a router um, in in the network, right? And so in this, you know, vertical space, like after collection, of course, you have, uh, you know, uh, messaging bus. So you have a whole streaming pipeline. You have a big data. You have, a, you know. Uh, UI and, uh, and and things like that, right? So this presentation will be focusing only on BMP and uh, in, so it will not cover the vertical or the horizontal. It will only focus on BMP and it will, you know, also it's a little bit to familiarize you with the, with the protocol, with the super basics of the protocol, a little bit of history of the protocol. And uh, so how things went at ITF and where we are right now, uh, since there is, uh, there has been quite some, you know, um, um, standard, I would say drafting effort around the protocol, right? So what is one of the most praised uh, qualities of uh, BGP? I would say we can answer that one of those quality it's uh, his uh, uh, scalability, right? So it can scale, and we can run the whole internet, you know, over uh, BGP. But how can we do that, right? And uh, that is by applying information hiding, right? You knew that there was a catch, right? So already a couple of slides back, you knew that uh, you know it's not that you can achieve, you know huge scalability without trading off with um, anything. 
So essentially, uh, that means that the challenge, uh, the main challenge when it comes to monitoring BGP is, uh, uh, you know, uh, a challenge to visibility, to gain visibility, the maximum visibility possible, right? And uh, so many, many years ago, and so that would be like uh, uh, almost around um, uh, 2013, if I'm uh, not uh, uh, mistaken, um, I was, you know, with the, uh, the very good friend of mine, Elisa Yasinska, and so one night we were at her place in Krakow, and uh, you know, um, uh, over a jar of nalevka. Uh, sorry for my pronunciation, um, which I was, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, informed that the Nalevka, it's uh, the, the real thing, right? So you have Nalivka, which is uh, uh, by, you know, works by maceration, and Nalevka, which is uh, the Polish version, is the one that works by uh, infusion. And so by working by infusion, it gives, uh, you know, the highest amount of happiness at the end of the jar. So you see by the end of the jar, very red puffs and lots of happiness going on over here. And that's so essentially what we, you know, conceived a little bit with Elisa that, uh, that one night is that, uh, you know, she was working back then at Netflix um, just as a small, uh, you know, uh, uh, detour. Uh, the Netflix network back then uh, was like uh, lots of islands, uh, so not a proper backbone like uh, you know interconnecting uh, the whole world and things like that a lot of egress traffic uh, and uh, these islands were configured of course with the uh, bgp multipath right so lots of um, transit connections and lots of lots of egress traffic and you want to try to you know have you know load sharing redundancy and things like that so how you know we were Back then, you know, just BGP peering with PMSCCT uh, with, uh, you know, the, the edge routers. And, uh, you know, we had a problem because you have multi-path and, uh, you know, with BGP, you get only one single path, right? And so what we did back then, we resorted to the only available mechanism that uh, was available to us, uh, you know, in 2013. And you can see the slides, you know, in uh, here in the middle section, a uh, couple of the slides that uh, were presented when uh, we presented, you know, at Nyanog uh, in Seattle in uh, around those years. Um, so that, uh, you know, the only thing we could do was to enable one feature, which was uh, uh, add path, which was not enabled, you know, in the production network, and we had to add it. Uh, between, you know, the edge router and the collector just for the sake and the purpose of, you know, getting visibility, right? And so essentially it's like, uh, you know, by not having a, mo a well-formed monitoring plane, which would be, you know, what one of the addition that, you know, BMP uh, introduces to the picture, right? So you don't use the protocol itself. So you don't use a protocol to monitor the protocol itself, but you have a separate monitoring plane with BMP. So back then there was no monitoring plane. So you have on a production router to add a new feature uh, just for the uh, exclusive uh, reason of monitoring the network. So not to run the network itself. And uh, so back then we were also trying, uh, you know, to add, uh, you know, you can see there was uh, some efforts around the BGP path marking. Uh, so yes, uh, around the BGP path marking, which was marking the paths in add path. Unfortunately, that work didn't go anywhere. And you can see on the right hand side, you know, of the slide that, uh, you know, I start, uh, we were starting to allude to the presence of BMP, but the truth is that, you know, BMP was uh, not really there yet. Like uh, uh, it was uh, high in the standardization, but uh, uh, no vendor was really implementing it. It was not actionable in any way. Um, so, and uh, what was our goal? Like you see it at the bottom of this slide, it's precisely what I said, like you have multipath and you want to, uh, you know, avoid uh, screen scraping essentially, right? 
So more recently, what happened? Uh, more recently, we have a BMP. Uh, so we circled a little bit around and now finally we go into uh, the core uh, of the presentation. So BMP is the BGP monitoring protocol and you can see that uh, it uh, has been awarded um, an RFC, RFC 7854. Um, and uh, it, has, it, it had quite a long history, I would say, as a, as a protocol, right? So it was really started to be standardized in, uh, you know, it started the drafting process in 2008, and there was some work until 2012, then there was a lack of interest. And then essentially, like, why there was a lack of interest? Because I think um, there was, uh, you know, um, something happened in the meanwhile, right? So uh, I would say between 2008 and 2000, maybe, 15, 16, which is when, you know, it started full traction and got, uh, you know, the RFC and things like that. Um, I would say uh, many things happened, including like uh, there are now, the, the, there were the dissemination of, uh, the, there was a whole big data movement, uh, you know, it was possible to store a lot of data, you know, to collect and to store and to make actionable, you know, large quantities of data. Maybe that was not really the possibility in 2008. And so, you know, there was a whole change of landscape that I would say there was a revived interest in, uh, you know, um, security and, uh, you know, with uh, uh, security incidents and root leaks and things like that, right? And uh, I must say that, you know, um, the original purpose, and we will see that in the following slides, the original purpose of BMP was uh, uh, security and security only, and that was, uh, that's, that was the only thing in mind. So I would say that, um, you know, if we should speak really the super basic features of the BMP protocol, it's that, you know, um, it, it is really uh, an uncomplicated, it comes with an uncomplicated protocol design. And we have to do two thumbs up to that because, you know, it's not, um, you know, it's not given for granted that you can, you know, uh, build a protocol, you can build, you know, a monitoring plane and, you know, um, and uh, without complexity. And that uncomplicated protocol design, it is something that is uh, very well defended at ITF, right? So there is always the temptation at some point, you know, an example of uncomplicated protocol design um, for BMP would be that it's a totally entirely unidirectional, right? So the monitoring station, once the, you know, uh, connection is established, I mean, never speaks back anything to the router, right? And so that's extremely simple. And that the simplicity, like, uh, you know, it has been, uh, you know, challenged a few times, like, you know, oh, let's add some sort of capability, uh, like, uh, you know, there are extension to the protocol, so let's add some sort of uh, exchange of, you know, uh, what I understand and what you can send me and things like that, right? But fortunately, you know, so far, uh, this uncomplicated protocol design has been defended very, very well. Uh, if you ask me another great feature of BMP when it comes to, you know, monitoring is the fact that it is, uh, it does timestamp, you know, uh, whatever message the router sends uh, upon sending it, over to the monitoring station, it gets, you know, um, uh, a timestamp, right? And so that is, you know, something I would say totally huge, like, you know, that just by regular BGP peering with the router, you can not have, I mean, you can have a timestamp, but it's the collector applying some sort of timestamp to, to the message. Um, of course, let's say, as I was saying, uh, BMP was a great effort, uh, the, but, uh, you know, um, there was increased hunger of data and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the original scope of uh, BMP was uh, kind of limited for, you know, uh, what people wanted to do, you know, back then in 2016 and more recent years. So, if you are totally not familiar, and so before getting there, so to what are now the recent works, the extensions, what is happening at ITF, let's, you know, really review the super basics of uh, BMP. 
like we said, it's a time stamped, it's a, a you know, uncomplicated protocol design, but what does it do? And uh, you go, I will reuse uh, slides from Randy Bush, two slides from Randy Bush, which you know, totally you know, capture uh, the situation in a very clear and concise way. Um, so when you have a traditional BGP monitoring, like you know, you have uh, a peering router, and there are a number of routers that are you know exporting uh, paths, like five paths. Essentially, you when you have a vantage point, a vantage point would be like a monitoring station. Uh, then you get only the best path, right? And all the others they are hidden to you. But then now with the BMP, you get all the paths you know, uh, you get all the five paths, right? So um, one may say like that you can achieve the same also with the BGP add path, right? So which is what we were doing back then with the Elisa in 2000, uh, 2013. So what is the, you know, advantage here? So the advantage here is that you, sure, you achieve exactly the same, but on top of that, you know, the peering router here would tell you also that uh, the path zero was received by peer A, the path one from peer B, and things like that, and timestamped, like I was saying before. So there is a clear, you know, advantage, uh, you know, uh, in using BMP um, for, uh, you know, um, uh, monitoring the BGP protocol compared to just using ad paths. In fact, uh, what I would say that uh, ad paths and BMP nowadays they don't even, uh, you know, compare to each other, right? So you really send ad path messages encapsulated in uh, BMP, right? Because essentially you still want to achieve that, you know, ad path sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, behavior. Uh, but uh, at the same time, you want all the uh, nice frills and extras that the BMP protocol you know, offers you. So let's say what was you know, um, one problem right, with uh, the original uh, RFC of BMP. Um, the original problem, it, it, so one of the problem is that it was covering uh, really only pre and post policies at ribbing, right? So uh, we, we remember that, uh, you know, in the workflow of uh, BGP, we have uh, like uh, Adri being, we have Lockrib, we have Adri about. So uh, BMP was only focusing on Adri being before and after the policies. Why? Because we remember that, you know, the main, uh, let's say, focus of BMP back then was security, was security leaks. So it was like, you know, doing a little bit of policy validation, seeing what the cosmic trash is hitting your router like as pre-policy and maybe you are never going to see it because you designed the best policies ever, right? And so it's a little bit to get visibility into that, do the policy validation and things like that. But still, you know, uh, what was the problem with, you know, with the limitation, let's say, with the, the original, uh, you know, RFC is that, uh, you know, still, if you want to get visibility into lock rib for any definition of lock rib, because uh, we will see later, uh, you know, what I mean by that, uh, still you would need, uh, you know, actual BGP peering. And, you know, for visibility in Azure about, you would still need screen scraping, right? So. Now you have a protocol which brings excellent ideas, but at the very same time, um, you know, uh, uh, brings, uh, uh, you know, doesn't solve all the problems that it uh, should solve because you still need screen scraping, uh, BGP peerings to get visibility in other, uh, you know, stages of uh, um, the BGP uh, workflow. Um, so to visualize a little bit, you know, the problem statement, it's like we have BGP peer A and B, and we have, uh, let's say, filters and policies and things like that. And so we, what we can get is visibility into the pre and in the post policy for BGP peer A and B. But then, let's say, what really we want to achieve, right? So let's say that in the previous slide we got you know, visibility into this. But we now want to get visibility also in all of these other parts 
which is marked with uh, you know uh, the red arrows, right? And all of that you know was totally you know undisclosed in the original uh, uh, RFC. So essentially, what we proposed was to expo uh, to extend the BMP uh, to Algeribout. Algeria about, of course, pre and post policies, right? And uh, that went very well. And uh, we got awarded also an RFC. So that's done and dusted. That's, uh, that was fantastic. I think it was really a um, uh, no brainer in the sense that, you know, from a, at least a standardization point of view, you know, working on Algeria about, it was very similar to work to Algeria Bean, also in terms of, uh, you know, options, features, uh, and things like that, flags and things like that. And uh, for the lock rib, uh, we made uh, another, you know, uh, drafting proposal. <clears throat> and this one, although, you know, the, we really went in parallel, like uh, lock rib and out, like, uh, like really the, I would say the same day we filed uh, the both proposals. Uh, the lock rib is still uh, lagging a little bit behind. It's still in last call. It's very good it's in last call, but uh, that tells you that it's taking uh, much more time. And uh, why it is taking much more time? Because of course, we uh, uh, for a long time, we uh, you remained a little bit on the topic of what is lock rib, right? So it's lock rib, it's just uh, um, uh, a BGP view. Uh, do we have a local routes? We have redistributed routes. So what is local rate, right? So, um, and I must say that uh, the end outcome, uh, uh, since uh, we were hitting also a little bit of vendor uh, dependent, you know, uh, situations, like uh, especially when you touch the, the relationship between rib and fib and things like that, was, you know, on purpose a little bit to leave it you know, to the implementation, what, uh, you know, uh, lock rib really means. Um, what are the use cases for lock rib and agile about? I would say, uh, you know, uh, a lot of use cases. I would say, I will mention only a few of them here. Um, it's uh, like uh, uh, for the lock rib. So something true to all of them is, you know, the policy verification. So it's true that, that you can go at any possible stage in, uh, you know, in the workflow of BGP and you can validate your policies and you can validate how uh, attributes are preserved or not preserved, right? So, and that is something, you know, uh, in my opinion, uh, great and fantastic. Then specifically to the lock rib, I would say we have, uh, you know, the possibility that we can correlate with NetFlow and IPFIX. So uh, imagine that you have your flow and BGP collector and that is correlating the two. Now you can use BMP and you don't need BGP peering for that and BMP for other things. And then Adribout, uh, it's uh, also, you know, closed loop kind of um, you know, uh, operations, right? So a little bit SDN and things like that. You, so you have a way without using screen scraping and things like that to check how are your output policies, what you are, you know, um, advertising to your peers and things like that. So then we have a problem statement number two, which takes us to the most recent developments of, uh, uh, you know, uh, within the GROW working group uh, uh, at ITF with regards to BMP. So you see here, like you have uh, uh, four legs, like uh, it's like we had a table and this table, you know, had one leg shorter than the others, right? And so this is the best visualization of what we try to do. Uh, fix the table and make all the four legs uh, the same size. <clears throat> Why is that? Because uh, BMP has uh, a number of uh, message types, right? Um, where some like initiation, termination, they are functional just to the BMP session itself. Then you get the peer up and peer down when the peers or of the peering router that is uh, that you are monitoring are going up and down a little bit of things that you could get through SNMP traps, but of course with much more information. Um, then you have the statistics report, so a number of statistics that the uh, uh, router can export. And then you have the key message, the route monitoring, which is essentially, and that's true also for the peer up and the peer down, right? So 
essentially what BMP does is it's embedding uh, 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 BGP messages uh, inside the BMP body. So you can, uh, you know, decapsulate the BMP message and parse it like a, a BGP message, right? So um, that said, like, uh, so we have these beautiful seven types. And so what was the problem? The problem was that not all of these messages, actually even the root monitoring message, which is, as I was saying, the key message probably uh, in, um, in, uh, in BMP, because it gives you the BGP updates and visibility into all of those and things like that. It's not, uh, um, you know, uh, it doesn't feature TLVs. So TLVs are the bottom part of the message were not allowed. Um, so this is a key feature because, you know, um, having TLVs across the board of all the messages then allows you to uh, uh, carry uh, whatever extra information and makes the protocol much more useful than just carrying, you know, uh, giving you visibility into the BGP message and things like that. Yeah, you get uh, the statistics and whatever, but with this, you can unlock many more other applications, right? And uh, the other draft that we have uh, going on, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's building a little bit on the TLVs. So with the, the previous draft, we were trying to build a, a, you know, a uniform basis. So every you know, BMP message features TLVs. And with this, uh, we propose to extend the TLVs by the use of uh, you know, enter enterprise specific code points, right? How we do that, you know, uh, if you are familiar with uh, you know IP fix, in we do it in the we are proposing to do it in the very same way. So you have the so-called EBIT, right, which is um, a bit in the TLV type code, and if the EBIT is set to true, then essentially before the actual value of the TLV, you have a pang. A pang it's a private enterprise number. Right? So essentially what you are saying, you are virtualizing the TLV. You are saying that uh, this is not the standardized space, which would be, you know, without any pang or pang zero. In reality, it's pang null, not, the, not zero. That's the standard space. But with this, essentially, you um, essentially uh, extend it to be enterprise private. So I don't know, PMSST or Cisco or Huawei or Juniper, they can have their own private space and their private code points. They don't have to squat the standard space to carry their own information. So while the, BG, uh, the, the previous draft, the uh, TLB draft was, um, let's say, uh, it, it has been a working group accepted, there is a still a little bit of, uh, you know, discussion on this draft for very valid point, I would say, because uh, essentially what is, you know, what has been the conversation so far was um, uh, that, uh, you know, we are at ITF and we focus on standardization and now we are opening a back door uh, to, uh, you know, not standardize things, right? So it's being a very interesting uh, conversation. Uh, my personal position is that you can always standardize things, but up to a certain point. At some point you hit vendor specific thing and precisely for those things, you need, you know, this sort of enterprise specific code points. And I will go to my last slide uh, before, uh, you know, uh, concluding, before, you know, saying goodbye, um, uh, which is what are the use cases for TLVs? Um, I would say endless use cases. We identified two for which uh, there are already two drafts. Uh, so one is the BMP path marking, right? Well, which is essentially imagine that you have, like we were saying before, you have, you know, add path enabled BGP messages uh, inside, a, you know, a root monitoring message in BMP. And imagine that you start annotating these paths that you are receiving, right? And you start saying, you know, they are, um, you know, all active paths, right? Or imagine that you are not getting the lock rib or you are getting, you are getting the add ribbing post policy, right? So maybe you have not already the well-formed local rib, right? And there you can have also backup paths or inactive paths or whatever. And so imagine that you are starting really to annotate all of these paths and their roles uh, as they stand in the, in, the, in, the, in the router. So that's uh, very interesting, very powerful. And the other, uh, it, which is as, uh, you know, when we made 
presentation number one about lock rib and adge rebound. So back in, I think it was 2017, the first you know, question that we received was like, okay, now you are giving me visibility in all of these vantage points, but what is filtering? Why something is being filtered out and things like that. And so there is a draft also about you know, that. So giving visibility a little bit in the policies uh, and, uh, you know, uh, if they are filtering out something and, uh, and things like that. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention. I hope it was any interesting. I don't know if there is any questions. Thank you. So uh, nowadays, BGP protocol looks like a Swiss knife. Uh, you can do everything, just create some <laughs> new TLVs. So, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we have no questions in chat. So uh, thank you for your story about BMP and uh, also about Nalivka. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, yeah. It seems it's time to go to Russia and check it here. Uh, ab absolutely. Yeah, that would be <laughs> my very pleasure. I'm very sorry that I cannot be there this week. Uh, it would be would have been a great pleasure. So thank you. Thanks uh, for. Дорогие телезрители, сейчас у нас будет перерыв до...